down. Hi, this is Jamie at Madlet Musings Podcast. And I'm using a new podcast recorder and didn't expect the countdown to go that fast. But we are here today. And I'm super excited because today we have Jill Lynn with us. She is an amazing author and she's going to be talking with her book today. But Jill, welcome to Thank the you. podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm glad to have you. And um, tell us just a little bit about yourself and the books that you write so the readers can get to know who you are. Okay. Um, I live in Colorado and the last number of books I've written, I've, I've set in Colorado, which I've been enjoying and I'm usually share, I like to take pictures. And so I share Colorado photos on, uh, Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I feel like I'm a totally boring person, but <laughs> <laughs> don't we all though? Like, yeah, like, I totally get that. Say? Um, I read books. I'm tired. I go to bed early. I, you know, <laughs> Uh, but I do like to, I mean, I like to hike. My family is crabby when I make them hike. So usually I just go on walk. Uh, I like to paddleboard. I definitely like Colorado in the summer, but our summer is like three months. So, right. You know, right. You yeah. get it Wisconsin's the same We Wisconsin's the same. It's just starting to get warm and sunny out. And then that will last for probably about four weeks. And then the black flies and mosquitoes will come out and then we will be housebound again, unless you want to get eaten alive. So we get summer till about S September, but then it starts getting cold. But then yeah. you have to contend with all the bugs. Do you have bugs in Colorado? Like okay, we don't have bugs, which is amazing. That's and nice. I grew up in Minnesota, so I know I know you bugs. get the mosquitoes then. But yeah. um, we don't have any water near us. I'm in Colorado. Oh, right that and makes so sense. That's why we don't have bugs. I, when I first mm -hmm. moved here, I was like, so you can walk outside and just leave a door open behind you. It's so weird. Yeah. I mean, we have a little, but nothing like the Midwest. So yeah, you don't dare leave a door open here. No. The house would be filled. It's filled anyway. I don't know how they get in. I know. But they find yeah. out, they find yeah. a way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you're like me, you're just a relatively average person living in an average American home. Yes, ma'am. And <laughs> writing books and then wondering why people are wanting to interview you going, what? okay. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. I totally get that. I went just a side note, which is so dumb, but you'll you'll understand this based on what we're talking about. I went to my daughter's school when she was in elementary school, and they had a um, it's not a receptionist, but whoever sits at the front desk at the school, mm -hmm. and she apparently had read one of my books. So when I walked in, she's like, oh, "Can you can you give me an autograph?" And I'm like. I see you like every day and she goes, I know, but I read your book and I want your autograph. And I'm like, okay. She pulls out a post-it note and she has me sign. The I'm like, I sign my daughter's slips. Just take a photocopy. Like <laughs> you have so many copies of my signature. What? She didn't even have the book there. She, had she didn't have the book. book. I just signed a post-it note. It was hilarious. It was so funny. And she was laughing too. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like this is That's ridiculous. Sweet. It is. It was really sweet and it's flattering, but it is kind of funny when you're seeing people that you see on a right. regular basis. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, can I have your autograph? And you're like, mm -hmm. okay, you knew yeah. me when I was a baby and you want my yeah. autograph? Okay. <laughs> totally. Go for it. I know my aunt <laughs> had me sign her books. She brought all of my books to like, cause she's still in Minnesota. So I saw her sure. and I had to sign yeah. every book and I'm like, this is so cute. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My dad asks me to sign his copy. I'm like, dad. I assign yeah. my copies to you. What am I supposed to write? Like, take a I shower know. next week. Be sure you clean your clothes. <laughs> House needs dusted. The shelves are looking ratty. Oh my god! <laughs> Amen to like. I never know what to put in a book. I'm always just oh like, no, me either. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try and come up with something a little bit different for each release, but it's starting to get too like cliche now. I think I'm just like Jamie Joe, Jamie yeah. Joe, Jamie Joe. <laughs> Oh, fun. Well, now that we've established who you are and that we are virtually the same person. Um, <laughs> and I know this because you told me a little bit about your book before we started. And there is a dead body in the book. I'll, although I, I will clarify, I might be like zoning in on that a little bit too much. Okay. There's, you a, don't dead write suspense. Body. there's a dead body from 34 years ago. So there's a See, article. that's even cooler. It's like a there's cold case. About a body. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, why don't, before I completely give the wrong impression about your book, the summer 
Keeping Secrets. Is that the name of the book? The Summer Keeping Secrets? Keeping Secrets, yep. Okay. Why don't you tell us about this book? It's a love-inspired trade novel yes. um, from Harlequin. Yep. Do tell. Okay. So um, the it's about a mother and her grown children. So Marin is 60. She's a recent widow, like within two years. And then when her father passes, she has to go clean out her parents' house. Her mom is already gone. And her sister has MS, so she can't help. And so Marin's children say, we're going to come and help you. They're 30 and 33. So they all gather in Dillon, Colorado, which is a real place. Um, what inspired the book is there's these cliffs right along Lake Dillon. Well, it's a right. reservoir because we're in Colorado, but right, right. Calls it but you call them lakes. That's yeah. fine. We'll give it um, to you. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it has this crazy uh, cliff drop off. And I, we were driving by and I was like, Ooh, I should write a book about a house on that cliff. And then I was like, and I should put a body in it. <laughs> Right. So it's so happy right now. It was not some religious spiritual experience. I just was like, Ooh, that'd be fun. You know? And yeah, I don't know um, if you can say you felt called to no, write about a dead body. So. No. Okay. Continue. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, they arrive at the house and everybody is kind of has their own issues when they get there and her kids come early and she doesn't know why. So everybody's kind of a mess. And then the daughter finds this article in a drawer. And she tries to ask the mom about it. And the mom just downplays it. She doesn't want to talk about it. And then they don't have a perfect mother-daughter relationship. Like, so the daughter is a little bit like, why won't you talk about this? Now I'm curious. And so she starts to dig into what happened. But they're also doing the house. And then the yeah. brother's there. And he's having marriage problems. But everybody's, yeah, dealing with their own stuff. <laughs> their own stuff. So lots of secrets, lots of, yeah. of yeah. family dynamic and, yeah. and secrets that go along with it. And the, and the dead body is just yeah. kind of a, a little thread that weaves through the story, the old dead body, the right. old death. In the, okay. All right. Yeah. So we won't focus on the dead body, even though that's where my brain is going. Tell me <laughs> more. <laughs> I mean, we can't, we can't. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's okay. No, we'll leave that. We'll leave that for people to want to pick up. See, now I have to go get the yeah. book. And so you're a very smart author. Drop <laughs> the dead body and walk away. Everyone buys the book. This is oh, how you sell you. A book. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fun. Okay. So, but you are dealing with quite a lot of hefty topics. Yes. I mean, everything from MS to troubled marriage, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So what makes you, yeah. what makes you want to go there as an author? Cause that's not easy. I don't know. I mean, I was writing love inspired, you know, sweet mm -hmm. hallmarky type romances, which I do love. I love romance and there is romance right. in this book, but I, I definitely want to dive into like family dynamics. I love to read about like I'm so intrigued that families do keep secrets from each other and they can be so dysfunctional and yet they're still family and there's something that yeah. draws you together. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of what I was exploring is like, you can have all these issues going on, but they all loved the grandparents. They all love this home. It feels very special to them. The children spent mm -hmm. a month there every summer. So there's all these pieces. And then the mom is going back to, you know, growing up there and then grieving her parents. It's just like, there's a lot going on, but I feel like that's real life. And I, yeah, I want to get into things that feel real like that, I guess. Yeah. 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 Why do you think it's important that we explore those things in fiction? You know, yeah. why write those real things in a fiction environment when you could write them in a nonfiction? What's the difference? Do you think? Yeah, for me, um, that's a good question. I mean, I have written a nonfiction book mm -hmm. about grief, basically. I mean, my friend was passing away while we wrote it. So I considered writing more nonfiction after that, but it, I came to the point where I was like, I just want to use these feelings and experiences in fiction. I don't know if it's because fiction is probably my preference for reading. Mm -hmm. um, I read nonfiction every night, like a little bit before bed, like a chapter. Okay. But yeah. I also can go to sleep where if I'm reading a fiction book, I'm like, oh, I'm into it. And it's hard for me yeah. to know. So those yeah. are the differences for me. So I guess, yeah, I just wanted to put all that drama and angst. And also I have to say, 
I think humor is important. So like mm -hmm. making it sound so, you know, dark, but it, they're still like siblings and they tease each other. And right. Yeah. I, I like right. humor in books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think humor in books is important. It brings some brevity, especially when you're dealing with tough topics. Like yep. even if you're dealing with murder or things like that, I mean, you bringing in some of that sense of lightness can keep exactly. the book from dragging a person down into the depths of despair. Yes, exactly. Um, like I still yeah. want it to be, I mean, I don't even know the definition of a beach read, but I've been calling mine Rocky Mountain Beach Reads. <laughs> oh, I like that. That's good. I'm like, they're set in Colorado. I want you to be able to pick it up on vacation and enjoy it. And maybe yes. you cry and maybe you laugh, but you're not going to walk away like depressed. <laughs> Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and that's important too, because some people look at things, you know, if they fall into a genre of like women's fiction or something like that, they can almost uh, like, I want to read it, but this is going to be really heavy. And so often exactly. the person's like losing everything in their life. And um, yeah. it doesn't sound like yours is quite that intense. No. And I, I think that I, that would be a hard read for me, what you're describing. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to pull in like, what are the things that I, would want to read in a book. And right. I, right. Yeah. And that's why I put in a little bit of romance because that always keeps me turning a page. <laughs> romance is nice. It's nice. Yeah. And you always kind of need that little happily ever after too in a book where you're dealing with family dynamics. Right. Exactly. <laughs> the family dynamics don't necessarily have happily ever afters all the time. <laughs> they don't. They don't. And yeah. that, that's hard. But yeah, yeah, I was thinking about uh, talking to you and I was like, you know, out of a million people, there might be like two families <laughs> that don't have anything going on. Yeah. yeah. It just, everybody has some kind of dynamic in their family yeah. that, they're, yeah. that they're working through. Yeah. It, it's true. It's interesting with family dynamics. I was thinking about it the other day and I'm, I don't know why I was thinking about it, but I was thinking about why do people sounds horrible. But when you have families that are going through something dysfunctional or secrets mm -hmm. are coming out or there's all this drama, what have you, um, mm -hmm. there are families that break apart. Yes. But then there are a lot of families that still mm -hmm. fight through it. And I was trying to right. figure out in my brain, like, why, why don't you just walk away? Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking it's not easy to walk away from family. Like you mm -hmm. could walk away from a church or you could walk away from a group of social yep. um, acquaintances, et cetera. But family is, I don't know, there's something in there like they're rooted with barbs. Like, you know, when you pull right. out a fishing hook, I don't know if you've ever hooked yourself with a fishing hook, but I have, and you can't just pull it out, right? There's a barb and it's right, right. Yeah. That's such a good description. And yeah, you, you can't, it's not easy to walk away, right? Like right. you would think, oh, Things are hard, so maybe this family decides to break apart. But that's not easy either. There's no, no, there's no perfect answer to it. No. So yeah, no, I, mm -hmm. yeah, and you even look at the families that have broken apart. They're still mm -hmm. tied together. Like, right? There's children involved, or grandchildren, or yep. some sort of something that you don't. Very rarely do I hear of people who have literally hard, cold, mm -hmm. cut off right. from this family. And when that happens, there's often a very stark reason yeah like a yeah very very yeah. hard reason you know correct makes correct. sense yeah 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 and i think there's are, important yeah. reasons for it too sometimes yeah. i don't want to yeah. i don't if anybody's listening and that's your story don't necessarily think we're criticizing that because i think sometimes exactly. there are boundaries and sometimes boundaries are broken so often you have to literally build walls so exactly yeah yeah, Ooh, yeah. that sounds like yeah. a good story idea I, go for it because I probably won't write that one unless we throw in some murder, which then brings a we whole other element into the family <laughs> trauma. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. There's a reason why Jamie doesn't write like women's fiction because it would get bad really, really fast. I would love to read it. I feel like you should. Uh, <laughs> See, I always thought it, I always thought it'd be fun to get a group of authors together and have us all write like a two thousand word short story in one of the others' genre, like do an author flip. Ooh, I love and just, that. Just, just have fun with it, like where there's short short stories, but we author flip. And so, like yeah. you know, maybe I end up writing Amish and you end up writing like 
you know, yeah. murder and Pepper Basham ends up writing like a ghost story or something. <laughs> Just completely strange. That would be amazing. I think we should all have the same prompt. Yes. So that it's like, yes. that always amazes me too, how like no stories are the same. You could, sometimes I'll be like, oh, that sounds similar to my book. Oh no. But it doesn't matter because we're all just writing such different things from different voices. So yes. that would be really yes. fun. Let's do it. Yes. Organize okay. us. Okay. Oh, sure. <laughs> Let me do that right away. <laughs> in, in your free time, your spare time. My free time. I have so much spare time. Uh, you do <laughs> so much. Honestly, I when I see you going, I'm just like, oh my gosh, how do you accomplish so much? I don't, I'm amazed. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's another story for another day, probably, but <laughs> I'm one of those people. And I think, you know, and this, you know, if, if we even segue back to the family drama, I have to be careful because I am one of those people that will mm -hmm. consistently be doing things because I'm constantly having ideas mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. but I'm not good at like with kids, I'm not good at play. I don't mm -hmm. play well, which you would oh, think even. an author would yeah. with their imagination, but I don't. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. You know, and I was trying to talk to my husband the other day because he's, we, we get family dysfunction sometimes because he's very much um, a linear black and white thinker. And so mm -hmm. to him, let's go outdoors, let's go um, rock climbing, let's go kayaking, camping, things mm -hmm. like that. And I've done all of that, mm -hmm. but my, I get bored. Mm, he's like yeah. how can you get bored I'm like I'm bored my brain is not being stimulated by anything he's like what do you yeah. mean it's not being stimulated he's like you've got to figure out the route we're going to climb up the, the rock face and I'm like why like so what's I get the to point? the top then what like what's the point <laughs> and, and so we, well sometimes we have little arguments because he's like you never do anything you're always in front of a computer or a book or writing yeah. something in a journal I'm like because my brain is just constantly going right and it's interesting, even within those family dynamics, having to find middle ground, mm -hmm. you know, and be like, okay, yeah, go out in the kayak, Jamie, you can build a story in the kayak, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I mean, some of that white space is good for the brain, for me at least, mm -hmm. like if I'm paddle boarding or whatever, I'll be like, oh, that's how I fix that story idea. But at the yeah. same time, I, and I heard you say this, I have a hard time shutting my brain off. Like mm -hmm. it's just constantly going. And when I go to yep. sleep at night, it's like, ah, it's the worst. Mm -hmm. Um, -hmm. so yeah. And some, I think I even have this in the back of credits of my book, but my son will be like, mom, your response times are like very delayed to, <laughs> to something. Yes. Does. Because I, I yes. think it's because I'm writing a book in my head and I do yeah. feel guilt over that. Like that mom mm -hmm. guilt or, that is a hard family dynamic. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, you're a 15 year old boy. You're not exactly, exactly wanting to have big conversations with me in the car. So right. I said to him the other day, you should be thankful that I'm always writing a book in my head because it yeah. saved you from a lot of conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love it. You know, yeah, I totally, re I totally relate to the delayed response time. When we had my, well, when my kids were babies, Mm -hmm. I would be sitting in the living room. They would, we'd be at my in-laws house and she had, my mother-in-law had a crib down the hall. Mm -hmm. We'd all be sitting on a Sunday afternoon and every Sunday they would make fun of me because my kid would start crying and I would just sit there and I wouldn't move. And by the time my mother-in-law was halfway down the hall, I'd be like, Oh, my, my child's crying. <laughs> and I'm like, how do you not hear that? And I'm like, I do, but it takes that long for me to go from, okay, I was here in my head, right. child is crying. What do I do? What do I do? Okay. Yeah. I should probably, okay, I'm going to shelve this. I'm gonna, and I have to go through this whole thought process to get to the point of reaction. My husband's like, don't count on her in an emergency. I know, right? I'm like, oh, uh, what's happening? How do I put this uh, in a book? Oh, someone's <laughs> dying. Like, <laughs> And then I'll hand the book in and I will wander around like a lost person, like, because my yeah. mind doesn't know what to do in that small right. little space. I'm just like, so mm -hmm. <laughs> my mm -hmm. poor family. I, I yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you are not, if a, if a reader's listening right now and you don't have a writer in your family, count your blessings. <laughs> you probably have less family dysfunction if you don't right? have a writer in your family. That's so true. I know. <laughs> 
Oh, um, funny. Yeah. So. I, I hadn't thought about that in a while, but you're totally right. And I get yeah, yeah. all sidetracked and I just, it's all I'm doing. I just, I'm like, I'm sorry. Especially when I'm trying to fix a plot problem. Like, right. Ugh. Right. Yeah. Right. Now don't interrupt me when I'm trying to pick, fix a plot problem because now you just wrecked it. You wrecked it. <laughs> right. Unless you're going to solve it for me. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Although with every now and then I'll, I'll look at my husband and I'll be like, give me something completely off the wall that would never happen in a horror movie. Yeah. And he'll give me something. I'm like, perfect. That's it. That's what I'm Amazing. doing. Cause it's so ridiculous and ridiculous things translate into fiction so well because they're just, yep. they're the shock value. But right. Exactly. So, okay. So I need something off the wall in a book. I message Jessica Patch oh, because yeah. she's my like wild idea that I would never, you know, I'm, I'm writing in this little box. So God bless her. <laughs> oh yeah. Jessica knows how to break boxes down really fast. Right? Yeah. <laughs> really fast. She's really good at that. So, okay. So back to your book, the summer, okay. the summer keeping secrets. Yeah. Um, did you have like a character that you related to the most? Ooh, that's a good question. I feel like a little bit, all of them probably. Okay. So the mom is really trying to, because her children are adults. So okay. she's really trying not to get into their business, even though she can yeah. kind of sense that things are going on. It was funny because when my daughter read it, uh, she was like 18 at the time. She was okay. like, Oh, okay, mom. Like <laughs> there you are, you know? And, and I would, I mean, you always channel a little bit of that stuff. So yeah. I was taking that angst I feel during the teenage years and mm -hmm. putting it into this, you know, 60 year old woman. So I definitely felt yeah. that with her. Um, and then Slade, she's 30. And so okay. she always feels a little bit like she's not enough for her mom. Mm -hmm. That's part of their mm -hmm. dynamic or, or never did things quite right. And the, the brother's a perfectionist. And so she thinks like he, he did everything right. And you think I did everything wrong, which of course yeah. is one layer of it. And the mother would do anything for her and would literally die for her daughter. Right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we grew up with those, those ideas about yeah. ourselves. So, and I don't know that that would be my idea about myself, but I just took, you know, whatever belief I had. <laughs> and then I translated mm -hmm. that for her. Like, yeah. You yeah. Know, you make it big. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah. You do. I think, and, and I think in every character to a degree, and it, it's natural that it would, there's a piece of the author in every character, even in the male characters we write, or yeah. even in the villains that we write. I mean, there's a little yeah. bit of, of something that we pull on to relate to that character when we're writing them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we put ourselves, I mean, in mm -hmm. that spot like I'll yeah. find myself so dumb but like sometimes I'm crying as I'm yeah. writing something yeah I mean I'm an empath but like I'm like feeling it <laughs> with the character oh, oh, I love there's it. no drama at my house at all so you know <laughs> not not with empaths and perfectionists and writers and yeah. teenage yeah, boys yeah. I mean your family is completely even even Absolutely. Yeah. No hormones and no, nothing no. going on. No. <laughs> so, okay. So with this novel, then, um, readers can expect good heartfelt family mm -hmm. ties and bonds, as well as mm -hmm. some dysfunction. Um, I think from what I'm hearing, though, this sounds like a, a novel that probably more family will relate to than not, because it's not necessarily the dramatic abusive situations and things right. like that. Correct. Yeah. No, there's nothing. I mean, there's a tiny little storyline, but, um, mm -hmm. I don't go into like a ton of detail on the page. And so I don't think, mm -hmm. um, that would be too hard for readers. Um, so no major trigger yeah. warnings needed. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And that's cool. So, well, the book is called the summer keeping secrets. It's written by Jill Lynn. It is published by Harlequin. Um, part of the love inspired trade collection, which if readers haven't checked that out, that's like really cool. How do they like find out about the love inspired trade? Cause I know you can go online and find about love inspired. Um, I think they still all pop up on the Harlequin website, okay. Under okay. The but actually I need to double check that. 
And it's only one book every other month, the Love Inspired Okay. Children. So six okay. books a year. Right. So, and they yep. started, I think, last year. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, because I know Jessica Patch's uh, The Garden Girls just came out, too. Yeah. Um, Which is so good. Oh, my goodness. It's, yeah. I quit writing. I hung up my computer and said, Jess, you're the queen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the worst? When you read um, like an amazing book and then I'm like, well, what? I'm out. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, it is the worst. But on the flip side, it's like, it's just so good. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even care. I could retire now and be happy as long right? as Jessica doesn't. So yeah, just yeah. retire and read books. Like, yeah, and read books. Yeah. Yep. I think that's great. <laughs> Jill, this has been a blast to have you on. I'm really glad to hear about your new book, The Summer Keeping Secrets. It is available now, correct? Well, it's available in June, actually, June 25th. June, so, June 25th, so yeah. not now. But that's fine, because by the time early. this airs, it'll be pretty okay. close, probably, okay. by the time this airs. So, okay. um, good, awesome. Well, um, if, re if readers want to learn more about you, where do mm -hmm. they go? My website is jill-lynn.com. And then I am at Jill Lynn author on all social media. So pretty easy. To awesome. Find. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thanks for being on the podcast today. Uh -huh. This was a lot of fun and we talked about a lot of random things. So those yeah. are always the fun ones. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah.